Hey guys, it's Steve. So you probably seen my previous video, which looked kind of like this. Well, yeah, I wanted to provide you guys with an update. It seemed like you guys were looking for a little, something a little bit more in depth. So sit back and enjoy. All right, so here we are on the dashboard. Uh, I have uh, blurred out a couple of the more private features that uh, I don't really want to give out my Wi-Fi password or uh, SSID, but uh, I figured I'd show you some of the information here. So on the dashboard, you have uh, one of the main features here is the network map. And uh, interesting, you can see uh, all your different icons. You can actually go in and uh, change the device info. You can change your image. Uh, this is my automated chicken coop. So uh, I put a crock pot. I thought that was kind of fitting. So uh, you can do anything you want pretty much from here. You can go in and you can edit your DHCP reservations if you wanted. Uh, you can go in and do pretty much anything there. Uh, one of the neat features is this internet usage. You can go in here and it will actually show you which of the devices are pulling the most or sending the most information. Uh, right now I have a network device that is uh, transmitting a lot of information. Apple TV is using up quite a bit. I've only got a 2 megabit uh, upload uh, speed, so uh, using actually a fair bit of it. So we've got some uh, wireless cameras here, some uh, printers and those sort of things. Uh, if you'd like to see any information about these things, I've got videos of those online. Just leave a comment and I will get back to you on that. Uh, you can also sort here, filter by your transmit or your receive. Uh, pretty pretty good stuff here. You can kind of uh, figure out what is using all of your data, your data bandwidth. You know what <clears throat> what devices are using a lot of data. All right. So moving along, uh, one of the other uh, features here is the guest access. You can get to this from the main panel too if you'd like, and uh, simply just turn it on and off. It's more of a toggle switch here. Uh, but you can just click the on button and everything that you have set already goes ahead. Now if you want to use guest access and uh, make any of the settings, you just kind of go in here to guest access and you go ahead and hit edit and that allows you to change all of the feature settings, whether you want the SSIDs turned on or not and how many guests you allow and the password. Now the guest access is a little bit different uh, on the Linksys smart Wi-Fi systems. You actually have to log in to an open Wi-Fi system, go to a website and then enter the password. Um, one of the things I would like to do is to be able to customize that, uh, that landing page a little bit, make it a little bit more personal. Haven't quite figured that out yet. If anybody has any ideas on how to do that, please leave a link in the description. Love to find out more about that. All right, so one of the other, a uh, couple of the other cool things in here is the parental controls. Parental controls allow you to uh, block what devices are able to send and receive data. So let's say uh, one of my kids has this Android 3, and I want to block it from uh, specific times when they're supposed to be in bed. So there I go. So every day I can choose uh, which day and how long it's blocked and uh, when it turns back on. So weekends they get the whole night to play till midnight and then they have to be in bed or have to have the internet turned off and uh yeah so that's pretty easy there uh some of the other things you can do is you can add specific websites to block and that will actually uh, block those websites from those specific devices so you just go in here and you can select which devices and the settings stay for that specific device as you know, what they are, what their settings are. One of the other cool things on this thing, on this uh, Linksys Smart Wi-Fi WRT3200 ACM is the media prioritization. So for example, I have an Apple TV and I have a home router. Those two devices I definitely want to have, or not a home router, a home server. Those two devices I definitely want to have online all the time. Uh, and allow their priority for their media to be uh, to be high priority. The range extender, the same thing. I want that one to be on all the time. 
Uh, I want that to have high priority. So we've gone ahead and given them high priority. Now you can also set priority via application. So let's say I'm doing a whole lot more live streaming and with a um, with a co-host and that co-host is coming in through Skype. So I can give priority to Skype and that will uh, allow Skype's traffic to get through your server a whole lot faster than anything else, which will reduce the ability or reduce the number of drops and hangups and those sort of things, especially when doing live streams and those sort of things. Uh, so some of those cameras you saw will get pushed to the background and I may lose frames on those but I will have a good steady Skype session there. Another thing you can do is for specific games, you can allow specific games to be uh, shown or have priority and the same thing, you know, so those, those specific games will uh, allow, will be connected to the internet a whole lot more prioritized than a lot of other, uh, a lot of the other network resources that would need it. Speed check is a uh, neat, neat device. If you have Internet Explorer installed, you'll need to run that. Chrome unfortunately does not work. Uh, this is one thing that I hope that they will change in the near future as Chrome is uh, pretty popular. Uh, but yeah, so they are requiring us to use uh, Internet Exploiter and uh, Safari on the Mac. So I guess you can use Firefox. Um, so yeah, anyway, so we'll move on from there. But that is a cool feature. It allows uh, a check from the, uh, from the router directly to your internet to give you a true bandwidth uh, setting of your of your internet connection. So external storage, these are devices that you have connected through USB uh, to your WRT3200. In this case, I've got a one terabyte hard drive sitting out uh, on my router that I can access from pretty much anywhere in the house. It's got, we can have some uh, different folder access, FTP servers, uh, we can run a media server on here and you can share the exact uh, folder names that you want and it will update your your folders and run scans and those sort of things ftp server if you want to be able to access it uh, offline or uh, outside of your home network and uh, secure folder access and those sort of things these are just uh i just generally run the media server in the house that's all i need it to be used for uh, just the DLNA server works works well for me. All right, so some of the other features I want to point out here is the Open VPN service. So you can run an Open VPN, which will allow you to connect remotely to your home network from a remote location. You just install the certificate, open the VPN, open your VPN client, it gives you a secure portal directly to your home network. Will allow you to access resources from your home network as if you were actually sitting on your home network. Uh, works pretty well for uh, remote network administration things. So if you need to get on your network to restart a server or restart uh, something online, gives you that ability there. Also, if you have uh, have resources that you need to access, but you need to be at your home in order to do that, you can easily just VPN into your router and then go to your resource. And it will appear to that resource that you are at your home. So some cool stuff there that you can do. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this video. If there's anything that you want to know more about, any of the specific features of the network map, the parental controls, the VPN, media, pri media prioritization, or the external storage, please let me know in the comments. And while you're there, please subscribe and leave a like. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you very much. Have a great one.